Robert like write this? Or why did Jeanette Strauss write this? Said, well, why don't you ask her? Because I have no idea. I, matter of fact, I don't even read most of the other books on the Courts of Heaven simply because it has a, I want to get what I'm getting out of the Courts of Heaven. Okay? Uh, for example, the book that Tom just mentioned, the Courts for Ownership and Order, that was a combination of insights that just came. Uh, Pamela stepped into something by accident. It, it brought forth a revelation. A day later, I had to download, and two days later, the book was written. Okay? See, there's a place in, in the courts of, well, in the realms of heaven. Uh, one room that I, one place I refer to as the room of uncommon productivity. And in that place, you can step into it and get something done that would normally take considerably longer in a very compressed period of time. The, uh, this book was two days. Okay? This book was just over two days. We'll be, and we'll study on this one uh, in a couple of days. And I got a little faster on this and it was only a day. And, and what, it, what it amounts to is very simply accessing the realm of heaven, stepping into that place, and then transcribing the book that's already been written. For those of you that the Lord has said you need to write a book, understand the book has already been written, the cover's already been designed. So all you have to do is transcribe it. That takes the load off of you, doesn't it? How many are going shaking it? Uh huh. Okay. Now the best place to get revelation is from the realms of heaven, right? That's where the revelation comes from. So if we want to maximize what we're learning this over the next couple of days, <coughs> let's get it from heaven. How about that? Can everybody stand to your feet just a moment? I want you to help me with something. Because, no, hold on, Adina, wait just a second. Now she's, she's, uh, she's been, her foot's been on the gas pedal for a while. And when she gets done, she won't be able to move from where she's sitting because she won't be safe to walk. You know, some people just can't hold the wine. In the world, you say they can't hold their liquor, but you know, we'll go there. Now, since we're all uh, residents of, or citizens of heaven, we ought to know what the place looks like. You know, if you told me your hometown and, and you didn't know where the county courthouse was and, or the police station and stuff like that, I kind of doubt your citizenship or I think you've only been there about three days, right? But since we're citizens of heaven, we can access and understand what's in heaven. And we can step into the presence of the Father. Because there's already a church of the firstborn it talks about in the Bible. And they're already having church. They're pretty good at it. They've been doing it for a while. <laughs> oh, by the way, let me before we step into that, let me just show you real quickly. This book is the one that we'll be talking about tonight. Uh, Jim has an older version of it. Wherever he, there he is. Yeah, he brought in an older version. Uh, so you can't find that unless you find an old one on Amazon or something like that. This is about the Mercy Court. I have another book that's on a dozen of the other courts of heaven called Engaging the Courts of Heaven. Uh, that one didn't make it here. Uh, so, but you can get that off the website. Engaging the Courts for Ownership and Order. Uh, there'll be a description of that in your packet. Also, overcoming verdicts from the courts of hell. How many know there's some verdicts that have been against some things in, in our nation? Yes. And now, as the church will stand, unite together and effectively engage the courts of heaven, they'll see change. And this one is, there's a help desk in the courts of heaven. That's handy. How many ever need help? Okay. This works out really well. There's an angel who will meet you at, the, at one of the help desks. One of the angels, in, is, her name is Dina. Okay. So you'll meet her. And the funniest thing is when you're, I, I, you step into the courts of heaven, do the help desk and say, this is my situation. And I'd like to, I need your help. And someone assist me. And they'll bring somebody to you. And invariably the person they bring to you is walking, walking you through the complex and say, they're just asking how the days are going, how the kids are, how's work. All that. They're just chatting you up. Like they've known you all your life. Because they have. Okay? So... Part of what I do is to help take the mystery out of the courts of heaven 
so that you can function and get things done in your family, in your church, and in the nation. We've seen some things in the nation recently that are a result of other things we'd like to see. Very simple, we need more people doing court work. Because your prayers are not being answered because of a legal reason. So let's get the legal stuff dealt with and the answers come. That's real simple. Now, I need everybody to do this. This is really hard. Okay? Okay? Uh, my wife, Adina, she's going to be assisting us in just a moment. But we want to hear what's in heaven as far as the worship for a few minutes and get ourselves attuned to the place of revelation. So I want you to very simply say this, Father, Father I want to take a step into the realms of heaven. And right now, I just take a step and just take a step forward into the realms of heaven. Let's just worship. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
Thank you, Father. She looks like she can't move. That's probably her right now. Okay. You may be seated. Now just as we're seated, we're not leaving the presence of the Lord. We're just in a, in a good place to receive some information. Right? Okay. My name is Ron Horner, and I'm from North Carolina. Uh, I did come to Christ for the Nations. 
couple weeks ago, in 78. <laughs> you know, that's not nearly as long ago as it used to be. Right? Anyway. Uh, now, I've noticed one thing. Whenever I'm in a place with tall people, everything is way up there. I was at a church a little while back, and the pastor's tall and Tom. Everything was made for him. I'm average height. Guess what? Not everything worked for me. You know? Some of y'all know what I'm talking about. Right? Okay? Now, if you want to see, I have a webinar series based on the original intro book on the Mercy Court. Uh, and you can see that at courtsofheavenwebinar.com. Uh, if you like my, my stuff and you want to bless our ministry, that's where you can do it. Uh, and the Courts of Heaven book, the, uh, all the books and resources and stuff, you can find at that website. Okay? Courtsofheavenbook.com. I thought that was a really catchy name. Since we're dealing with what? Yeah, yeah the book. Yeah. Okay. That's, see? Uh, you know, uh, it, it, don't have to hit me on the head with two or four more, three or four times before I figure it out. Right? Okay. I, Tom told me to stay over here on this side, so I can't go aiming for all y'all over there for causing the camera thing. So if I go out of the sight of the camera, I'll be back. Okay? Now, I'm of the age that if you are speaking and all of a sudden a thought just disappears from your mind. It depends on the size of the room as to how fast it comes back, do you? Have you noticed that? If you're in your kitchen, it'll, it'll be back in just a couple minutes. But if you go to a gymnasium, it's over. You know what I'm saying? And that thing here with the doors open and stuff, it could be a while. Okay, so hopefully I won't have too many brain freezes and things like that. Uh, I did find that my forgetter was improving. You know, how many understand what I'm saying, right? Okay. So if I have to keep looking back, that's because I don't have the little thing in front of me. Because he used Mac computers and I use PCs. You know, I'm sorry, you know. I, I know it's... What can I say? You know, family uses the a Mac, and I'll just use the other. Now, who am I? I've been in, in ministry over 40 years. Uh, pastored seven plus churches. I have to write them down to figure out how many that we founded and planted and stuff like that. Uh, I've done this. Now, how many can relate to this? You've been the pastor, the associate pastor, interim pastor, worship pastor, youth pastor, janitor, yes. especially the janitor part. Okay? okay? Uh, so. Uh, I'm the, also the registrar for Covenant Theological Seminary, which is in Greenville, North Carolina. And I don't live in Greenville, but when you got the internet, you don't have to anymore. So uh, that works out real well. And I've been teaching on the Courts of Heaven for about five years. Now the, and I live in Central North Carolina. What I do is I give you the zip code and let you figure out how to pronounce the name of the town. Okay, that's always fun. Because the name of the town is Albemarle. Or or Albemarle, or Albemarle, or whatever designation you can give it. You know, it's just, as a friend of ours says, whenever he orders something online or over the phone, he just gives them the zip code and waits. That's always real fun, okay? Now, in Dallas, you don't have that much trouble with that, Arlington either, but uh, Albemarle, you do. Because we actually, in North Carolina, actually used to have a county called Albemarle. It's about 300 miles away from where I live. And so, you're near the coast? Well, three hours away, yeah. And I'm close. About three hours I can get there. So, uh, and my wife, Adina, we have three girls and two grandsons. My middle daughter, who has the sons, she earned it. And these are some of the books that we've written. And uh, all on the courts of heaven in some fashion. Uh, and, and the Lord just simply said, write it down, gives me the download. And we actually step into the courts of heaven, receive the download, and then type it out. Uh, Carolyn says that I write them faster than she can read them. Okay? Because we had four books come out in one week. They all came together. Okay? So you can see. Now, when the, when the, the mode for that hits, then you just sit down and do that. My wife knows, are you doing it again? Yeah. And she says, leave me alone. Okay? 
Now, it's entirely, it is entirely possible that you're not going to agree with everything I say tonight or this weekend. Is that possible? Okay. Because how many know that you don't always even agree with yourself? Right? What you believed five years ago, you don't believe that anymore. Okay? So if that's the case, just love me anyway. All right? If you like it, fine. If you don't like it, I'll be okay too. Okay? I, we've been doing this enough time. I'm not going to worry about it. I'm not going to be here to convince you. I'm going to lay out my experiences, what I've learned, and if it helps you, I hope it will. I believe it will because we've been able to help a lot of people understand how to operate in the courts. How many have tried to drink water out of a fire hydrant or a fire hose? You know, that's a really good way of describing what Robert does because it is like uh, drinking out of a fire hose or something. And he gets the jet lag. Have you ever noticed his schedule on Facebook? He's in Ireland this week, he's in Texas, and then he's back in Germany the next week. Okay, that's a lot of jet lag. I'm glad I don't have all that, you know. See, we just had our time change over the weekend. So we lost the hour, put me on Texas time. I come to Texas, it puts me back on the old North Carolina time. So I'll get to go through the time change twice when I go back home on Tuesday. Okay, so at least you guys aren't in California. Uh, last year I was in India, and in India they don't have a one time zone, but it's on a half hour off from everybody else in the world. And so I went from Delhi to Northeast India to Nagaland, and the it was getting dark at four o'clock and getting light at four in the morning. But in Delhi it was more like what we have here. So you had to get yourself adjusted to where you were, not what the clock said. Because it was messing you up. Especially the first morning when, why is it so light? I'm not ready to go to get up yet. Because I have my regular time that I get up three hours earlier isn't what I want. Okay? Especially if you've been flying all day. So, I want to teach you on my understanding and my experience, my desire, that you're able to maximize what, what we learned here this week and you're able to see some things immediately change. Now let me share with you, uh, there's our schedule, okay? Now I won't start, if it says nine o'clock, I'll start at pretty close to nine o'clock. I won't do the charismatic late 30 thing. How many know about that, okay? That's not a, it's not a shotgun target. It's, I'm a different kind of hunter than that, okay? So what are we gonna learn? How to engage the Mercy Corps? How to dismantle accusations. Anybody ever been uh, faced any accusations? Okay. How many like to get rid of those things and learn how to keep them gone? Yes. You're going to learn how to remove some false verdicts. You know, you're going to experience a new authority, especially in the courts of heaven. Because the courts of heaven paradigm is not a fad. Okay. You know, charismatics love to chase a fad. Right? I've been in the charismatic movement for a long time. Okay, back when the guys that were new then are old like me. Okay, <laughs> and they we've lived through their fads, and things began to be treated like fads. And oh, it's the hot button. It's the new buzzword in the charismatic movement. It's this is not a buzzword. There's a it's a paradigm that God wants to institute in the church so that we can deal with the legalities. We've been praying the same way over and over and over expecting a different result. We call that insanity. Anywhere else, except in the charismatic church, we call it prayer. Right? How many of y'all been praying for something for 25 years and it hasn't changed yet? Okay? A few of you. The rest of you just haven't thought back, what, what was I praying for that long? Okay? And what it is, is when we keep praying, maybe we need a different tool in our tool belt. You know, I, my wife wants me to hang a picture. She does not want me to use a shovel to drive the nail in. Uh, would you agree with that gentleman? Okay. The honest men in here would definitely agree with that. Okay. You could do it, but it's not recommended. Okay. No, nor would I use a handsaw. But if I need to use a handsaw, a shovel won't do, and a hammer won't do. But when I need a hammer, guess what the best tool to use is a hammer. Okay, so this is simply another tool in the tool belt. Now, to say you've got, I've got all these nice tools in my garage, but you don't know how to use it, 
Well, that's kind of a waste too, isn't it? So let's learn how to use these things, all right? You're going to learn how to access the road of heaven. Well, we already did that one. Because what did you do? Just step. Just step into the realm of heaven. Kathy, when you want to ask you to step forward, I'm going to ask you again. Come on. Come on. No, I don't bite. I've had, I've had most of my shots. Okay, most of them. Okay. When you step, did you sense any, anything else? What else? What did you say? No, just a greater awareness and um, uh, just a real drawing of the Lord and and speaking to me of sweetness and the more I got in, the better it was. Okay. Now, let me sit here just a second. Why don't you take a step forward with me? There you are. Now, if you're noticing, you actually saw that the atmosphere shifted just a little bit when she did that. Now, here's a little fun thing you want to practice on yourself at home. Uh, turn face the audience like me, okay? Now, I want to take a, a side step as if I'm stepping into heaven. And then step back where I'm stepping back into the realm of the earth. And I can actually tell the difference on me where I am. How many want to try that real quick? Stand to your feet, okay? I'm real practical when you all this kind of stuff, okay? Now, I'm going to have, Kathy is my guinea pig here. See, she got this, I can't miss this necklace thing, right? That's, and she looks a lot better than Rabbi. Sorry. And I'm just, what can we say? You know, sorry. Okay. Now, just take a step. Okay. Feel the difference? Okay. Now, everybody, just, just take a side step. Y'all pick the, which direction you're going to go so you don't bump at each other. Okay. And you can now step back. Now step with one foot in either and just kind of notice where it is. You'll actually be able to feel which one is where, or what part of your face is in, in the realms of heaven, and what part is not. Is that cool? That is unbelievable. It's lighter? The air is not as dense? How many, how many sense that? Okay. Now, here's the scripture for that. Matthew chapter 3. Jesus went to be baptized by John the Baptist. And he said the kingdom of heaven is as close as your hand. That's pretty close. I had a friend in Bolivia. We did the very same thing. You can have a seat. We did the same thing. I said, he said it's like the membrane on a hard-boiled egg. It's that thin. And you can actually feel that where you're pressing through that membrane. Okay. Now you can practice that anytime you want to, and you can become aware that you're in other realms of heaven. You know, it says that Jesus only did what he saw his father do and say what his heard his father say. So where was he to do that? He was in his father, right? Okay, what well, was the father? In heaven. So he was inside looking out. Okay. Now that was worth the price of admission for some of you. Right? Because you can come, become so aware that, for example, I was teaching one Thursday night at this church and I said, you can just step over into the realms of heaven. And as I did, I was aware how noisy it was in heaven at that moment. A lot of commotion, a lot of stuff going on. And I'm hearing all that and I'm still trying to talk and teach what I'm teaching. And that is going on in this, this side of me, is hearing all this stuff. So I had to step back over so I could finish what I was thinking. Okay? Now, how many sense the difference when you did that? Okay? How many know you need to practice a standard repeat? Now, they tell you that if I, if I repeat something 27 times, you've got it. Now, we're not going to do it, we're not going to do it that, that many times. But, let's just simply, let's just take a step over. If, you're, if you feel the difference, raise your hand. Okay? Either one. Yeah, the heavenly hand. Yeah, pray the, pray the heavenly hand. Okay? Now step back. But don't step all the way over. Just kind of pay attention. And you'll be able to sense the, the, where the, the difference is. <coughs> 
Because the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And when Jesus opened, what he did at the baptism was he opened the heavens for us. Okay? Because his father, it says, immediately coming up out of the water, he both saw and he heard. That's what open heavens do. It enables you to see and hear. Right? Okay? I want to see and hear. So I need to be aware. Aware of the realms of heaven to do that. Okay? Now, learning to do this will help you function in the courts of heaven. Because it's there that stuff happens. As far as the courts. Right? The courts of heaven are where? In. But heaven isn't nearly as far away as we thought. Okay? It's really, really close. You're having fun over there. Right? Okay? Now, just the same thing when you, we had you, I had you uh, lean against the pew and then take a step forward. You know, we got pews here, so it's, you don't get to move those very easily. If you had chairs, you could scuffle them all around. But it's the same kind of thing. You step into the realm of heaven. And I, if I worship, I want to worship from where? Heaven. Okay? And so if I'll step into it, I can do that much easier. When I was in Nagaland the first time in Northeast India, there was a young man there who was going to lead worship. And he was going to play the guitar and sing and all that kind of stuff. You can have a seat. Okay? And so I said to him, tell you what, why don't we step into heaven and worship from there? And so I just took him by the hand like I did Judah just a few moments ago. And we just stepped in. And he began to immediately hear sounds and songs that he began to play. And he does that to this day. He's the worship leader in his church in Dimapur. And that's what he does. He steps in, hears it, and plays it. Now, if you're a worshiper, that's what you want to do. Because it doesn't get any fresher than that. How many worshipers? That's okay. You don't have to be a worship leader. But if you're a worship leader, you definitely want to do this. But as a worshiper, you can do that. And don't wonder, is she here? And the answer will be yes and no. Because yes, she's here. No, she's not really here. <laughs> right? Okay. Because there are always songs and sounds in heaven that you want to tap into. And if we learn how to tap into them... We'll have the immediate resources of heaven available to us now. You know, it tells us in Matthew 6, we've been praying, Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So as we step in, we can actually get a better sense of what's really going on in heaven that we need to usher into the earth now. Right? Because we've often known it here, but we haven't known it experientially. Like I said, I would doubt your citizenship if you couldn't tell me where the county courthouse was and the county you lived in or the police station or the library, right? Okay. Uh, here I'm going, you just moved there, right? Yeah, well, if you just moved there, I can give you a little bit of slack. Okay. But, but see, I was raised in, in a church that the only time you heard about heaven was the best place to go when you die. Well, you know, all of us, we have a responsibility. You're a warning and believer. Your job is to get people to heaven. You just don't have to wait till they die to do it. Right. You can start today. That's a lot more fun. And you can do the other too, but let's start now. Because then they won't be afraid of going. And you won't be afraid of taking them. Right? It takes all the spook out of them. Okay. So, we're going to also learn how to release heaven. For example, stand to your feet again. All right? Pick somebody right beside you. And I want you to just look toward them. Raise your hands up like this, but don't touch them. Just put your palm close to their palm and release the glory. Don't touch, just release the glory. You sense that? Put your hands up and we'll just... You sense the difference? Since what's happening? Now, I bless you. Just begin to bless them. 
I bless you. I release the glory of God in your life. I bless your, your home, your family, your health. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory, 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 glory. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. How many are drunk? <laughs> I don't know if you are. I'll watch you. I am. <laughs> okay. All right. Good. Take a take a giant step forward. There you are. Whoa. How many of you played the, the game Mother May I when you were kids? Okay. Now, now we call it Father May I. And the answer is always yes. So Kathy, yes you may. Take a giant step forward. All right, come on. Y'all get up here on the front row. Get where you can get some freedom away from the pews. Yeah. Uh -huh. Step in, y'all. Okay. Okay. See, it's the, because the heavens are open. Hallelujah. Just take a step. Mother may I, Father may I, yes you may. Hallelujah. I remember playing that game on my grandmother's steps. And she had a long stairway. And it'd take you a while to go that up and down and all that stuff. And he just said, I'll take another step. You like going swimming, right? Now remember, if you're a kid, what would you do if you were out Got it. Jump in. Now, yeah. it says the kingdom of God, uh, the kingdom of God is, you had to be like a child to enter the kingdom, right? So act like a kid. Act like an eight-year-old. <laughs> Sensing something different? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> ah. mm -hmm. See, we can function out of the glory as opposed to functioning out of our personal anointing. Guess which one is unlimited? you seen angels? Or men and women in white linen? If you see an angel, ask them, do you have something for me today? And then just receive it from them. Or if it's one of the men and women or women in white linen, ask the same thing. Do you have something for me today? 
and just receive it from their hands. place you've never been. Not quite like this. Hallelujah. Now we'll be stepping back and forth like this over the next couple of days. It'll be quite interesting. Able to make yourself way back to your seats. That may be you. Thank you. 
My dad learned to swim because his dad threw him off the bridge into a creek. And you know, you're motivated at that point in time. He was motivated. He learned to swim. We don't recommend that because social services has things to say about that. <laughs> okay. But a cop feel like that, this way for a rabbi here, you know, he just kind of needs to jump off the bridge. Everybody say this, ha. Ha ha. Ha ha. <laughs> You'll get more dose as you go along, don't worry. I have no doubt about that. Okay. You can try to sit. <laughs> you can try. Okay. Now, you don't mind, I'll skip through a couple of slides as we go along, okay? But you will learn how to navigate successfully in the Mercy Corps, okay? For yourself, for your family, for others. Uh, you're going to learn the importance of the court system. And let me summarize that very simply. It's so the church can get some things done and the kingdom advanced in the earth like it's supposed to be. We are behind schedule. And until we catch on to what God's up to, we're going to remain behind schedule. The best way to catch up is... Get on with what he's doing. Get in, in the, learn the court system. Learn how to navigate in the courts and begin to operate in your area of responsibility within the courts. And if you'll do your part and the person beside you does their part and the person beside them does their part, guess what? It doesn't take everybody doing everything. It takes you doing your thing in cooperation with God. Okay? You'll also learn how to intercede more, much more effectively. Now, I've been doing this, you know, I've been walking with the Lord for quite a while. And I know, all, you know, the spiritual warfare mode, and the romping and stomping and screaming at demons and stuff like that. How many have ever done that? Oh, yeah. You know what happened? You got your throat torn, you're tired. Couldn't speak for the next day. And the demons? Still there. <coughs> right? Tell the truth. Uh, you know, if you puke it and it don't puke, it may not be a demon. Okay? How many ever buked something and didn't buke? Okay? So, understand, there's just more out there than you know. Okay? Now, that's the book that we're, we're working from is the Engage in the Mercy Court. But I already had you download a PDF version of it. We want you to get the, the printed version. Uh, and especially the Spiral Bound because you're going to be using some of that again and again and again. That's why we put it in the Spiral Bound because I don't want the books breaking up on you. Okay? Uh, now, here's a testimony that I just received the other day. It said, thank you, Dr. Horner. After this session, for the first time in five years of marriage, I experienced a breakthrough to be the only bride of my household. She was the, she and her husband had gotten married, and she never felt like she was the only wife in the marriage. That's a, a, some junk going on that created that situation. We dealt with that. And she says, uh, there were visible winds of change, even in the weather that night. Next day, I received a double portion of blessing and recognition. The veil of oppression lifted over my marriage. Thank you for addressing the unspoken and unsecret, unspoken and exposing secrets of darkness to help bring freedom. Uh, double portion of blessing to your ministry. We'll take that part. Okay. But she's very happy that she is in. Remember Charles and Diana, Prince Charles. She said with Camille and Parker Bowles, it was kind of crowded in the marriage with three. This lady was in the same situation where she was never alone. She knew that when they were together, somebody was watching. That's not a comfortable feeling. That's dealt with now in the courts. Praise the Lord for that. Okay? Now, I get this question is it in the Bible? Okay? Now, I know I'm talking to you guys. You've been exposed to Robert Henderson. If you haven't gotten that message, well, it's another day. Okay? But, I, so I, when, I, when he said to me, I heard the phrase, courts of heaven. John Benefield, he spoke the word, just the phrase, courts of heaven. 
And the Holy Spirit said, study that. Now at that time, Robert didn't have all the stuff he's got now. He had maybe three CDs. His first three CDs uh, that were kind of piecemeal. Some of you know which ones I'm talking about. Okay. So there weren't any other books to look at on the market at that time. Okay. Matter of fact, Robert didn't have a book for another year or so. Okay. But the Holy Spirit said, study that. So I said, well, let's see, how many, let's see if it's in the Bible. So I took some court-related terms like witness and testimony and, and judge and things like that. And I found 1,700 plus references to those words that I put in that first round. A few months later, I added some more words to it. And I came up with a few more. Now, I have not read all these verses uh, you know, in one sitting. That would take a half an hour or more. <laughs> and then I went back a few months later. And the number is considerably higher than that. I won't tell you how many. Because it's hard to believe. Just assuming it's 3,500. Uh, how many other subjects do you know have that many verses? I don't know of any. Not even healing and financial stuff and things like that. Not even close to that. So apparently it's important. And God's been setting you up. How many know that God, one of God's names is Jehovah Sneaky? Yeah. <laughs> okay. He will have you sing stuff that you would never pray. Right? You sung stuff. Oh, that's a wonderful song. I love the tune. And I'm just saying, God, I give you all of my heart. Do whatever you got to do. You would never pray that. <laughs> Think about it. Not at my... No way. I'm not about to pray that kind of prayer. Uh -huh. He said, remember you were at that conference and you... Oh, yeah. I did pray that, didn't I? I sang it. That was sneaky. Jehovah sneaky. Okay. So, is it in the Bible? People? Because I really do get this question. Is you No, know, it's not in the Bible. It's not a scriptural content, concept. Well, let's see. The first five books of, were called the book of the... Books of the... Law. That sounds kind of legal, you know, the Torah, whatever. Yeah. Well, eventually. Uh, well, uh -huh. anyway, um, we're not going to go there. Now, we have the book of Judges. Where do you find Judges? Courts. Okay. First and Second Chronicles. We have stories of what happened to the Judges. Kings, the same thing. You have Job. You know, remember from the story of Job, it is. The one of the most misused scripture passages in the world. If you want to hear an unscriptural sermon, go to a funeral. Because most of the time, you will hear an unscriptural sermon. You know, God needed another angel. So he took the baby. No, he didn't. Angels aren't made out of that. Different species, right? Or some other stuff they'll come up with. Okay. Okay. Uh, we have in Zechariah chapter 3 the fact that Zechariah, uh, Joshua the high priest was standing before the Lord and Satan in his right hand to accuse him and he was in a court setting. Well, we go to Job and look at Job chapter 1. We have the Lord, we have Satan, but we don't have... Who's missing? Job. In chapter 1, he's missing. Chapter 2, he's missing. However, he knew about the courts because you look in chapter 23 and he says, what's this accusation I've been guilty of? Uh, I've been looking, why, why would I, have been, I have been accused of? I don't know what it is. Because he missed the court date. And in, you know, in North Carolina, we miss a court date to call that a default judgment. Because they'll you know, render based on the evidence presented. And that didn't work out real well sometimes. Didn't work out real well for Job. Okay? We have the book of Psalms. The first... Roughly the first 50 Psalms, if you look at them, those are David's defenses in court. He's defending himself from giving testimony in courts. Okay? So just take a look at that sometime. You'll see. Remember when he says, oh, God, uh, shadow the teeth of the wicked. That's what he's asking the court to do. Things like that. Okay? So then they'll need a dentist after that. Then we have Isaiah. He talks a lot about the courts. Ezekiel. <laughs> And Zechariah and a whole bunch of other guys. Daniel. Okay. Now, the parable of the the, the principle of a parable is that uh, we qualify ourselves for the truth that's in it by digging it out. 
in North Carolina, where I, near where I live, uh, was the first major gold rush was about 30 miles from where I live. That was in eastern, in central North Carolina. This guy found a big rock. This guy, he thought it was a doorstop. He, I mean, he made it, literally made it a doorstop in his house for a couple of years. Then figured out, oh, this is gold. And took it to this jeweler in Fayetteville, North Carolina, and the guy bought it for him for $800. Yeah. Uh, it was only a 30 some pound nugget. Uh, I think that's a good size nugget. The guy actually, somebody went back and said, you gypped the guy, you need to give him a lot more than that. And so he did rectify it. But that became the first major gold rush and then the stuff that happened in California. Okay? So we know a little bit, we have a little bit of gold. We have gold all over the place, underground, if you want to dig it up. Okay? They just haven't made it profitable to do that in our part of the state. Okay? But the principle is the, the revelation has to be dug out for you to benefit from it. Okay? If I'm willing to benefit, if I'm willing to put in the effort, the revelation will come. If I'm not willing to do the, the effort, the revelation will stay where it is. And that's kind of the way it has been with the principle of the courtroom prayer. Because it says in Luke chapter 18, Jesus taught his disciples on prayer. Said, and he said he taught them a parable on saying that there was in the city a certain judge. And so the first clue is, where do you find a judge? Okay. And a widow came to him and said, I want justice from my adversary. Sounds like a court setting. Now, was it on the front in big letters? This is about the courtroom prayer. No. It was just simply, you got a judge, you got somebody needing justice. Sounds like a courtroom deal. But we've missed this all these years because we read past it. How many have ever read past something? Okay, we do it on a regular basis, actually, because we read past John chapter 3 when about the heavens being opened and the kingdom of heaven being as close as your hand. Everybody, hold your hand up. It's closer than that. Okay. Now, how many when they step into the courts of, into the realms of heaven got a little wobbly? You have real wobbly. Yeah. Yes. You know they say weebles wobble, but they don't fall down. You know, or if you fall down, I can't catch you. I'm sorry. Well, let Neil do that or somebody. Okay. And okay. Kathy, you don't want to catch him either. Okay. I don't blame you. Okay. Well, you can't land, but. Just so far. Okay. Now, these are the books we're going to be looking at. Uh, the word, I use the term mercy court because Hebrews 4.16 says, let us find grace and mercy. Come to the throne. Well, they call the judge's chair a throne. In the Old Testament, when you had kings, they would act as judges. They sat on a throne. So we can get the picture real simply. This is a courtroom setting. And I can get mercy and grace to help me in my time of need. Which sounds like the widow woman give me justice from my adversary. Okay? Now, there's the old paradigm of prayer. And here's a saying. You probably know that. Those who are the ones opposing the new move of God were the ones who were leaders of the last one. Okay? I've been around enough to know some of those old guys. Okay? And uh, some of them do really oppose it because... The revelation wasn't given to them first. Yeah. Okay? I've known people concerning the courts of heaven stuff. The revelation didn't come to them first. And so they're upset because somebody else got the revelation. Now, I don't know about you, but I don't really do the choosing on who gets the revelation. <laughs> I can create a landing place for it and it'll come. But if you haven't created the landing place, it won't come. Okay? That's kind of how it works. So, uh, I keep mashing the button. Oh, okay. We know what the definition of insanity is. And have we needed a new paradigm? Because yeah. how many have done the romping and stomping stuff? <coughs> Come on. I know at least three of you have. Okay. And, you, and you've done all the warfare stuff and yeah. binding and binding and binding and loosening and loosening and loosening and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Okay. And how much a change did it affect in the earth? Not as much as it should have. Right? We'll be polite. 
Okay? And they're good revelation, but they're ones that you, we have to build on as we go through the process. Okay? Uh, do you have prayers that have not been answered even after much persistence in prayer? Raise your hand if you like that. Okay? How about... Have you experienced frustration over unanswered prayer? Okay. How about, have you ever wanted to give up because of an unanswered prayer? Okay. Have you done spiritual warfare only to suffer backlash or retribution? Okay. Have you ever drawn back from spiritual warfare due to repercussions? Okay. Let me give you some good news. I've been able to operate in the courts of heaven and doing this for about five years. And if, if I don't go above my pay grade, how many know what I'm saying? We have, we all have general authority as far as believers, but we also have specific arenas of authority. And if I stay in my specific arena of authority, I don't have to concern myself with backlash. Okay? Does that make sense? Okay? That's also good news. Now what it does tell me is that I know some people that do, if they suffer backlash, I can very simply ask them, are they operating in the realm of their jurisdiction or have they stepped past it? For example, I have a, I have a friend, uh, still, they're still friends. Uh, the wife called me one day and said, we are getting beat up all the time. And her husband had a prayer ministry. I said, well, how's he praying? So, well, he's declaring war on the devil. Oh, How many know that's probably not a good idea? Okay. How many can figure do the math here? Uh, me, but private, declaring war on the devil. That's not even any close, we're close to my job. That is above my pay grade. So is it any surprise that retribution was happening in his family? Okay, now... If I don't operate above my pay grade, I'm in a safety zone, right? So I just simply stay in my safety zone, okay? That makes sense? Now, uh, we have to understand that the spirit arena operates on legal principles. I guess you guys know that, okay? Along with that, this thing really doesn't like me at all. The thing way over yonder, that's well, I got a point at Tom. And it's got a laser pointer on it. I'm not sure he wants that. Hey, okay. hey, okay. do the little little hammy thing. Look for a cookie. Um, our prayers have to have legal footing in order to be answered. Okay. So, see, some of the other prayer paradigms kind of skip over that sometimes. Mm -hmm. Oh, God, answer the prayer because they're such a good person. How much that's not going to get the prayer answered? Because God responds to what? Faith. Okay. How about we ask for the wrong reason? Okay. Now, we've got some more reasons that I'll go over tomorrow. But this verse is one that really hits a lot of people. Because how many have ever been disillusioned? Okay. Let, let's do the math again. If I've been disillusioned, that tells me that I was once under an illusion. Because I cannot be disillusioned if I'm not under an illusion. So we had to be real honest with ourselves and say, what's the illusion? And if I can settle that, for example, one illusion people get under, that, uh, the, and the devil will try to hit some people with this, is that if God loved you, He would heal you. Now, John chapter 3, verse 16 tells us that God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that if whoever believes in Him should not perish but have everlasting life, right? God settled the fact that He loved us on the cross. Nothing else is necessary to Him to settle His love for you. Can we agree with that? Amen. Okay. And if that's the case, then the healing is simply gravy on my biscuit. It's not the meal. And I don't have to be have that quote healing for Him to prove that He loves me. He will. He may. The healing may come. But that's simply, again, gravy on the biscuit. Right? Okay. So I can settle that. I'm a whole lot better off. Because I'm not...
thinking God's going to prove his love to me over and over and over and over. He's already done that. He did a really good job. I mean, it's lasted for 2,000 some years. I don't know, lasted for a whole lot of other people. So I think I can be happy with that. And also, it keeps me from being disillusioned because I'm not under the illusion that he has to prove his love. Because he already did. And that's good news. Okay? If your prayer is not answered, there's, gonna, there's a legitimate reason why it's not being answered. You want to find that out? The courts of heaven will help you deal with that. Okay? Now, we have to understand also, ask the question, have we met the legal qualifications? Let me give you a little hint. Those who want to take a picture of it, if you'll wait till you see the little box in the corner, that will tell me that the slide is done with all the little bullet points. Because I don't throw everything on the slide at one time. That way you get the whole screen full. Oh, no, instead of taking 10 pictures, okay, I'm helping you cheat. Okay? Now, have you ever wanted God to bend the rules to answer your prayers? And all of us probably have somewhere along the way. Okay? Once every legal reason is dealt with, it stops the Lord from answering our prayers, the answers will come. Okay? So, oh, you want to back up and take a picture? Let me back it up. There. Now you can take the picture. Okay? That helps me not chase too many rabbits. That doesn't mean I don't chase rabbits. It just means I don't chase as many. Which is good. Okay? Now, and you know that I'm from, from being from the South, and you Texans, you understand that we listen slow. <laughs> right? Those of you who are from up north, we will frustrate you completely. Because you're thinking faster than we're listening. Okay? So I'll try to talk a little faster sometimes. You have to listen faster. Does that work? Okay. See, I, I was raised around Pinehurst, North Carolina. And we have a lot of transplants. The snowbirds or something. And you guys have them down in McAllen and stuff. But we have them in Pinehurst. Because they're on their way to Florida. And they get stuck halfway. And so here, for us, they stayed in there and during the spring and during the fall instead of just going all the way down or going up in the winter, going south in the winter and north in the summer. That's right. That's how they did it. Okay? So, and they were always frustrated by the Southerners because our favorite saying is, do you want sweet tea with that? <laughs> if you go to a restaurant, you're going to get asked and they're going to call you honey and dear and sweetheart. Yep. If you don't like that, yeah, that's right. Because we have sweet tea, okay? Now, much of our spiritual warfare has been done while trying to overthrow something that has still has legal grounds to exist. See, we had a in our we live in a small town out Al, Al Beverly, Albemarle, okay, sixteen thousand people. Okay. Now, it's not the smallest town around, but it's not far from it. Okay? And we had a palm reader open up a shop in town. And all these intercessors came to me and said, we got to pray that she shuts down. I said, no, you need to find out why she had the legal reason to open up. And the Holy Spirit said, because the, the church had not embraced the true prophetic, it opened the door for the false prophetic. Now, he's not talking to the Baptist and Methodist when he says that. Right? Because that's not in their box. Right. But for the Pentecostals, the Charismatics, and that group, guess who he's talking to? So when they, some repentance was done for all, for not embracing the true prophetic, guess what happened to the poem reader? She went away. Gone. Because we removed the legal reason she had to exist. Because sin exists because the church has failed to fulfill their purpose. Okay? So when we see stuff we don't like, okay, ask the question, what's the failure of the church in this arena? And then begin to work against that. Does that make sense? Yeah. Now, because what it does, it helps us understand that sin is in place because we've allowed it to be. And we have failed in some things. The church has done a pretty poor job in some things where we've advocated certain mountains of culture. Okay? So if we will understand and deal with our stuff, 
we can begin to close the doors to these things. Because otherwise, you're coming against something that still has a legitimate legal reason to be in existence. And it's not going to move. It's going to frustrate you because you don't see any movement. The, does that make sense to anybody? Okay, if you've been doing an intercession for any amount of time, you can appreciate that. Okay, uh, let me, I do not recall the name of the book, I'll try to give you the name, but Floyd McClung wrote a book about loving, it was as, in essence, loving your city to Jesus. Okay, and he talked about dealing with the legal reasons why sin was in place in the city. And if we understand that, it'll help our intercession to be much more effective. And we won't just be trying to get stuff done because, oh, it looks like a good idea. <coughs> and we'll be more strategic in our, in our work. Okay? Now, Isaiah 49 was the scripture for that. Sin remains because of a failure of believers to properly exhibit the kingdom. Right? If we properly exhibited the kingdom, Remember what you just sensed just a little while ago, the glory of God. And it says, it tells us that in the, in the Bible that the earth will be filled with the knowledge of the glory of God as the waters cover the sea. And the word knowledge there is the word that means an intimate knowledge, not just a head knowledge. They're going to have an intimate encounter with the glory. An intimate encounter with the glory, not a passing one, an intimate one. How are they going to do that? When the church begins to release the glory that they're carrying. When you go to Walmart, you can release the glory on the produce aisle. How many know it needs it? If you go to Dollar General or Albertsons or wherever you go, releasing the glory as you go down the aisles. Purposely, purposefully releasing the presence because it affects change. If you're not releasing it, somebody is. For some force or other. Okay? So let's release the glory. We're, uh, every one of you are carriers. And you're contagious. Okay? What you got is catchable. Think about it. Because just think of what happened a while ago when you did the hands to hand, hand to hand thing and you just released the glory. The atmosphere in the room shifted. Did it? Okay? And it can happen every time you do that because you're releasing what's in you, which is the glory, to them, which will it'll help bring cleansing and change to each party. Okay? Now, when we legally remove the enemy's right to impact a person, place, or situation, we will see the breakthrough released to that person, place, or situation. We have to deal with the legal stuff. Okay? Now, the, the more repentance we're willing to do the greater the benefit will be in the course. If you're not willing to repent, then you're going to be frustrated in your time in the courts because he's going to require repentance on a regular basis. Okay? Now, when I've done a lot of repenting, if I've repented for all the sins against Israel and stuff like that, you know, uh, you're never going to get them all exhausted, I don't think. I don't think we, we live that long. There have been plenty of sins. Okay? But I can also then be, present that past repentance into evidence in the new case that I'm working. Because it's evidence that I can apply. Okay? So I don't have to spend three hours every time we get together repenting over the same stuff we repented of two weeks ago. Does that make sense? Yes. The Lord may give you additional things to repent of, but you don't necessarily have to go back and repeat yourself over and over Okay, which makes things work a lot smoother. Okay? Now, when we've not removed the legal grounds, we also open ourselves up to negative repercussions. That's one of those other things about the pay grade, but also we haven't done our, our own repentance. For example, if I had a problem with pornography, I better not be trying to cast out a lust demon. How many know it's not going to go well? Right? How many know I have no moral authority to cast that thing out? How many know it's not moving? It may run and hide just to come out on another day, but it doesn't, it's not going anywhere because it has no need to. Matter of fact, it might just find, hey, we got some rust to go. And uh, come for a visit. Long-term stay. Okay? And we don't want that. 
as we get our lives cleaned up and deal with the things we need to take care of and repent for the iniquity that has gone unchecked in our generations, okay, and our lives and our cultures, we'll see breakthrough on levels we've only imagined before. And I've, I'm watching breakthrough happen in multiple locations. Uh, Carolyn helps me sometime uh, with my court work because uh, she's a prolific seer, and I can value that gift. If you're a seer and you wonder why, why am I here to see? Of course, I have a really good place to practice, isn't it, Carolyn? Okay. So, uh, and we'll be talking to somebody. We've talked, we've talked to people all over the place in the last few weeks, all over the globe. Okay. And he gives us different ideas and insights as we're doing that. And we see all kinds of things that need to be repented of. And we've come, the Lord sends us some doozies. I mean, when you got one guy that, he's a Muslim background, his wife is Hindu background, he has a Zulu grandma, but his mama was Catholic. And it's, that's not all, that's just, that's part of it. Okay? You know, we come across those kind of people. I mean, no, that's not the one you want to start on your counseling sessions with. Okay? But the courts of heaven is able to see victory in those situations because he points us where to go. The seeing helps you understand or have insights to stuff that they don't even know. And they've, they've stepped into a great deal of freedom. This particular couple who had that background has stepped in a tremendous amount of freedom just in the last few weeks because we did some court work in their behalf. Okay? And so, Sears, you got a home in the courts of heaven. You're needed in the courts of heaven. Okay? Now, you're going to also regain your confidence in aggressive intercession. But I don't mean you have to go romping and stomping and screaming. <laughs> See, Jesus, it talks about in Revelation how Jesus uh, uh, judged and then made war. How many know that we can all go picking a, a fight against some enemy of, of the Lord. Right? We can all do that. Yeah. Now, however, did you know that David learned something from Saul? He actually did learn something good from Saul. Okay? And this was that when he was in, at Ziklag, he talks about this. He said, Lord, shall I go up? And the answer was, yes. Okay? Now, it's one thing to go picking a fight. But that doesn't mean you're going to win the fight you pick. So he asked question number two. Will I overcome them? And if he didn't get an answer to the second question, he didn't do the first question, no matter what the first question answer was. We've not been known for asking the second question. Does that make sense? Shall I go up and will I overcome them? Those are two entirely different things, right Dan? Okay. I was, I mean, you can pick a fight, but if you know you're not going to win, guess what? Dan's going to go another day. He'll go get a bigger baseball bat, right? Okay. See, wisdom, okay, tells us in Proverbs, and all you're getting, get understanding. Get wisdom, get understanding. He's trying to politely say, don't be stupid. <laughs> and remember in Romans, it says there's a, that a spirit of stupor had been given to some people. And it actually should be the word stupid. Okay? The spirit of stupid had been given to those people because they were acting very stupid. Okay? Y'all catch on really quick. Okay? And how many know that you'll also find out you don't have to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the devil? Okay? Because going toe-to-toe -to -toe to the devil, you're not the same class of being. So let's get the angels involved here. That's what they're for. Okay? Now, when you do battle in the courtroom correctly, you don't have to do it on the battlefield. Because I get the legal presence handled in the courtroom, the battlefield is a non-issue then. I've had to do very little battlefield work after if I did the courtroom work correctly. Okay? So you, some of you, that should be really good news because you've done a lot of the battlefield stuff. And, okay? If we successfully deal with the accusations, judgments, and other actions that have impacted our lives, and the lives of everyone on the planet, we're going to see massive change. I don't just throw that out, because we're able to impact entire people groups 
with what is done in the course if we do it right. The book on ownership and order, on ownership and order, is about rescuing people that have been slaves of some kind of situation. You talk about sex trafficking slaves. We can deal with the ownership issues and get it restored to the Lord Jehovah as opposed to whoever that pimp was. And they can come into freedom and they don't even know why. Because we were able to do something in the courts in their behalf. Because we can do a whole lot of stuff in people's behalf without them directly uh, even aware. Because some people aren't in a position to pray for themselves. Okay? We had a situation with a, a young lady uh, a few years ago, she was not in a position to think for herself or make a sound decision herself. So we went into the courts of heaven, dealt with accusations, asked her, the, the, uh, the lady's sisters what they had heard, what they knew about accusations concerning her, dealt with the accusations. And we, had, we went back in for a second session because we didn't feel like we were done. See, in the courts of heaven, you can a recess and come back in a few days later, which we did. Uh, at, when we finished the second session, about four or five days later, we get a phone call and said, uh, and the, the young man who had been the husband who had been estranged from the young lady, and they had just gotten married just a matter of months before, <clears throat> he said, I don't know what happened, but she's back. Well, we knew exactly what happened. Courts of Heaven dealt with those legal issues that were keeping her in bondage. She got set free. And not only that, she quit the job she was at. They all got back together. They were actually on their way to a family vacation. And that was pretty good. That happened in like four or five days from the time that we did it. So what had been a long-standing issue lasting three or four years was resolved in a matter of days. I happen to like that. Okay? That's also the courts of heaven is the only prayer paradigm that promises a speedy response. We'll look at that in Luke 18 tomorrow, okay? Because he says, I will avenge them speedily. Now in North Carolina, that means in a hurry, quickly. And I think it means the same thing here, okay? This paradigm, if you're an intercessor, it is truly a game changer, okay? Why haven't we gotten the answers? How about this? Anybody, if you deal with unconfessed sins, guess what? Uh, that can hold your answer back. They can be our sins or the sins of a nation. Impure motives of the heart. Issues in our bloodline. Men, you can sin against your wife. And it's going to hinder your prayers. Okay? Women, it doesn't say anything about what you do to the guy. Y'all deal with, you and the Lord deal with that, alright? Okay? Wrong beliefs can do this. Wrong alignments can cause your prayers to be answered, uh, not be answered. Uh, you can regard iniquity in your heart and you won't see the answer come. You can have unforgiveness issues. You can have idols in your lives. Uh, broken covenants. Innocent bloodshed. Withholding the tithe. All those kinds of things. I need to back that up, don't I? All right, let me, uh, let me back the other one for you. Those are in the book, yes, ma'am. Yeah, they're, they're in the book, uh, chapter. Two or three. No, I can chapter one. You'll find it. If you read through 15 chapters, you'll find it. Page, okay. page 22. Page 22. Yeah. Thank you, Tom. Okay. That's, let me skip on past this. Okay? See, we have a long way to go in a short time to get there. Right? Go. So let me do one more segment, and then we'll call it a night. Now, there are three different paradigms of prayer. And a paradigm is very simply a model or action or system of beliefs. Okay? Now we're all familiar with the Lord's Prayer, right? Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who have trespassed against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. And we've all done that. At least twice in your life. Okay? Now, in the, that particular paradigm, the Lord's Prayer, which the Son talking to the Father, there are over 200 books on that subject. Matter of fact, you all probably have some of these books. Okay? 
but over 200 books. That's pretty well covered. What do you think? Okay. Now, the friend to friend paradigm, which is in Luke, both of these are in Luke 11, and it says a witch who has a friend go to him at midnight and say, I need some bread. Okay. Cause, and then the guy says to him, I can't get up and give you because my, I'm in bed. My children are asleep with me. That was not the truth because the guy was sleeping with his kids. Ain't no way he was sleeping. <laughs> Think about it. How many have grandkids? Yeah. They double as helicopters in the bed. Yeah. You end up with a foot in your face. He was not sleeping. I don't care what he says here. He was not telling the truth to his friend. Okay? That's just my opinion. Okay? Then he says, uh, ask, the, the paradigm here said, he will ask and keep on asking, seek and keep on seeking. So there's no time limit on this, is there? You just keep at it, keep at it, keep at it. Okay? So, however, in Luke 11, you find this went on through about, a, about 12 verses. And Jesus had basically given his disciples what they could handle at the time. You know, you, they walk out kind of like hamsters. <laughs> Chicks are all full. And they can't handle any more information. So he stops with it. He waits a few chapters and picks it up again. In Luke 18. And that's where he says, uh, I mean, I'm going to skip on past a little bit because Robert's been here a few times, so you probably heard some of this stuff, right? Okay. I'm on. Click, click. Oh. There we are. I'm almost. Oh, I don't want to hit the laser thing on Tom. Okay. Luke 18. Then he spoke a parable to them that men always to pray and not to faint. Now, the word out there it means you do it to fulfill a legal responsibility. That's our first clue. To do what? A potion. Cause problems for you. Okay. And it says in Amos chapter 3, verse 11. An adversary will be all around your land. And he will sap your strength from you and plunder your palaces. Now you think about it. The pattern of an adversary is to do exactly that. See, we've always thought, well, he's roaming around the land. Well, who does that sound like? The devil, right? Because in 1 Peter 5, 8, I think it says that the adversary, the devil, walks about like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. Okay? So we're talking about, in this case, about the devil. All right? So, but the whole purpose of that adversary is to just wear you out. If I just badgered you over and over, if I went to Darlin, I kept seeing the same thing every day, every day, every day, and just never let up on that. What does it do to you after a while? It tires you out. You get tired of hearing it, for one. Okay? But when your strength is gone, then is your ability to resist still in place? No. I can go steal your stuff because I've stolen your joy. Because I sapped your strength. You know, Nehemiah 8.10, the joy of the Lord is our strength. So if he can steal your joy, he can get your stuff. Okay? So we don't want that. So what we have to do is realize how he works primarily is through accusations. And we want those accusations dealt with. Okay? Now, verse 6 says, Then the Lord said, Hear what the unjust judge says, and shall not God avenge his elect who cry out to him day and night, though he bears long with him, I tell you that he will avenge them, not eventually, speedily. Okay? And I have testimony after testimony of answers that have come quickly. Matter of fact, let's see. I'm going to skip past a little bit of this. Wow, I've got a whole bunch of stuff here. I want to back up. I don't want to miss it all. In one case, one lady, there's a situation with her daughter that had been gone for three years. We went to the courts of heaven. In 24 hours, it was done. I have a pastor friend. And he was just learning now, this. Now, he's a, a Baptist pastor. Okay? This is not exactly in their box. Right. But he read the book and he said, I think I'll work on this. So he began to deal with an accusation that he knew about in the church that morning. That afternoon, 
he had people calling saying the situation's resolved. That's pretty quick. Baptist church. Baptist church, yes. And again, that's even in the folks he was praying for, they didn't know he was doing it. But he knew immediately this was a response to this. Okay? How many need to fluff your pillow for just a moment? Stand here for you just a second. See, there's that old saying that the mind can only absorb what the seat of the pants can endure. How many know that's a very spiritual saying? Pastor Todd knows that. Yes. See, because some people will go home long before they leave. Yeah. <laughs> and it happens on Sunday. You'd be amazed how many roasts get cooked sitting on the pew. Right? right? Okay. I just wanted you to plug your pillow. We're not going to be here for just a few more minutes. And I'm not trying to lie about that. Okay? I realized that in closing, in closing, a uh, pastor friend of ours, he said he only thought he did three closings. I said, no, it was four. Because <laughs> people would keep up with it. Uh, one church I worked with years and years ago, they got a new pastor. And this particular pastor had come just straight out of Raymond. So you know what happened with those guys. They preach everybody else's sermons for a long time. And this guy had his non-words that he always peppered his sermon with. Now, the good news is what the, uh, the high schoolers that I was working with at that time, they were paying attention to the sermon to find out how many times he said, bless God, in his sermon. In a 30-minute sermon, he said it 124 times. Bless God. Bless God. Bless God. You know, after a while, even though that's a nice thing, it's not even, yeah. Too much of a good thing is not a good thing. Okay. The next week, 130 sometimes. But they were paying attention. <laughs> okay? So some things we just say are non, non-words, don't really have any life to them. Uh, this judge, he did not fear man. No, but he was also instructed not to fear men based on Jeremiah, Deuteronomy, and Leviticus. Okay? The widow came to the judge. That's what we see in this passage. And he responds to the widow because she had a right to be heard. Again, that was a commandment to the judges uh, in Deuteronomy, Isaiah, and Jeremiah. Okay? Uh, he laments that she might come and rail me or assault and strain on me. Okay? Get this picture of Kathy. And Rabbi, stand, stand up if you would. Okay? Kathy being the little widow woman in this case. And the judge. The judge who does not... I, I, we understand all that. You just role play for me. And, and he's concerned that Kathy's going to take him. Is that realistic? No. I know she could. But, but fit from the physical. Yeah, yeah. But that's another rabbit. Right. Right? Okay. Now, but that's the kind of picture that they were playing. That this rabbi, I mean the judge, this rabbi, uh, this rabbi, he was afraid that she was going to come and rail on me. You ought to read some of the other alternate translations of that particular verse. It's actually quite funny. Uh, because they portray her as a little bitty four foot tall. Yeah, those tiny thing, okay? And, and he's some big hulk of a guy, okay? Still, as this widow is bothering me, but he still had a job to do, I'll see justice done to her. Not to have her forever coming and pestering me. Okay? Moffat kind of got the picture, I think. Okay? The widow could come as often as she needed to. She was known for her tenacity, she was forced to be persistent to get what was due to her. How many know that some things aren't just going to be handed over to you just because you're so nice? Right? Dan, you're a nice looking guy, but that's just not the reason, is it? Okay. Sorry. I'm sorry. You know, you know, if I go to the store, they actually want money. My good looks aren't going to do it. Okay? Yours might, but it's a mustache. That's what it is. 
Don't pester. Just persist. We are permitted to come before the judge over and over until we get the result that we need. Okay? Let me back it up here. She had that right to continually come before the judge just like we do. That's the message in this. Because Jesus says, listen to what this unjust just judge is saying. The unjust judge understood something that the church missed for 2,000 years. Okay? That we can keep on coming. And the judge will respond to us when we deal with the legal reasons that are holding our stuff in place. Okay? Now, the widow understood justice demanded <coughs> an answer. Okay? I have to make sure I click the right button. See, we are almost done. Because that's the schedule, and I don't have to speak much about that. I do need you to stand to your feet just a moment. Now, what we've been doing, obviously, tonight is laying a little bit of groundwork. Tomorrow we're going to cover more details and actually do a scenario in the Mercy Court. Now, you've got some stuff in your packet. You've got some process charts, okay? Kind of a flow chart. That's just a real simple way of looking at it and filling in the blanks, so to speak, okay? So it makes it a little easier to follow. I have a lady that I work with, and she always has her chart close by. Let me pull out my chart. Let me pull out my chart. And she'll always pull out her chart and follow the steps. Because if you will learn how to deal with the accusations, you may have to concentrate on it initially. Then it will be very simply second nature to you, and you'll just be dealing with them on a regular basis. You do not have to be in the courts to actually do the, the steps that I'm going to talk about tomorrow with dealing with the accusations. Okay? You can be in the courts, but you don't have to be. I have a friend, when she first got on to this, she'd be, wherever she was going, that's another accusation, Father, I, and she'd bring that accusation before the, the throne and get it dealt with as she's driving in her car, okay? So you don't have to be all spiritual and in your prayer closet, huddled away, hoping nobody calls you on your cell phone and that kind of stuff, okay? By the way, in 15 minutes, you can turn your cell phones back on because, well, uh, then all the people that, and your phone came blowing up for all the messages you've been missing. See, I was in a meeting one time and the guy said, the first person whose cell phone goes off, it's $1,000. All of a sudden, the cell phone rang. It was his. So you know what everybody else did? Hold their, mind, hold their hand out. Okay. How many enjoyed stepping into the realms of heaven just a little bit ago? Okay. Now, you're not actually out of that, but it's a good thing to practice it, to get it where it becomes second nature, because you'll be much more aware of heaven and of what's going on in heaven, okay? So how many want to practice one more time? Okay. Now, those of you that can take a big step, I dare you. I need up a dog dare you, as they say. Father, we step into the realms of heaven. Again, thank you, Father. Just take a step. There you are. Yeah, I know that wobbly feeling. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah.
those of you that are seeing something, you can actually turn your head to the left or right and the scenery may change. Father, I release your touch in this auditorium this evening. Thank you, God. Release. Those of you that need to go, see in the morning at 9 o'clock. Okay? And we have the books back there. Those of you that don't want to leave this place. <laughs>